Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor draft. I'm Paul Chion, and currently we are now at rank number three. After the video yesterday, we had a very, very sweet, one of the best kind of controlling decks that I've drafted. I mean, I've had decks with more rares, right? That I had, I've had some sweet, sweet doppelganger decks, but yester uh, yesterday's draft deck was just really, really smooth. Really, really enjoyed the way that that deck played out. And we ended up going seven and one. So we're going to try to run it back and see if we can at least sniff number two. I have not seen a number two next to my name, and we're gonna go for it here. We're gonna go for it here. Now, before this draft starts, I do wanna say, if you wanted to support this content in other ways, I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the current patrons. Really do appreciate your support. The link is in the description below. All right, and the draft is beginning, and that is in Ezrim. So normally when I draft, I, uh, I say, don't take a gold card because you never know, right? It's really hard to definitely lock yourself into a certain color combination. But when you open a top five rare in the set, throw that out the window, you take it and you hope for the best. And it's one of those things where even if it's kind of open, it's generally worth it. Ezrim is going to be the slam dunk pick here. The other consideration, I mean, this is a good pack because Case of the Gateway Express and A Killer Among Us are also both really, really good cards. You can make a case for A Killer Among Us because it's splashable and it's a very, very good card. Case of the Gateway Express is going to be fantastic in just about any white deck, but we're going to take the Ezrim here. This is just such a fun card. Five mana, five, five flyer, investigate twice. I mean, this card is awesome. And this time, we're not getting it passed to us in pack three. We're opening it. So we're going to slam it and see what happens. Come on, please be open, detectives. Please be open. Please. All right. Moving on to this pack here, we have cards that stand out to me. We have Lightning Helix, Novice Inspector. That's basically it. I mean, those are the two cards that really stand out to me. Crawl Whipcracker can be good in black green, but of course, don't want to take that after a first pick. Uh, Ezrim, World Souls Rage is fine, but we're slamming Novice Inspector here to start out. I mean, I am loving my start here. Novice Inspector plus Ezrim Agency Cheap. Great, great start. Ooh, and this is a phenomenal pack. So this pack is very interesting. Green seems very open because there's a Glint Weaver, a Nervous Gardener, and a Loxodon Eavesdropper in the pack to go with a Reckless Detective, which is one of the premier two drops in the set. So had I not opened a completely broken card in Ezrim first pick, I would have probably taken the Reckless Detective here just because premium twos are hard to come by, noting that there's also a lot of really good green cards. But I want to be blue-white. So what's the best blue-white card in the pack here for me? And that's going to be Granite Witness. It's a detective. I also like Outcold in these strategies, but I'm simply not going to pass Granite Witness because there are detective payoffs, and hopefully we get them. I Admittedly, this was not the best card out of that pack, but I think it was the correct pick given that we first picked the Ezrim. Sometimes I don't advocate forcing, okay? I don't advocate forcing, but with the Ezrim, when it's close and you're taking a, you're looking at a card that's maybe a percentage point or, or, or so lower than something else, you, 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 know, you, you take the worst card to make it work, right? Unless it's just so obvious that you shouldn't be these colors, then you don't take that card. Here, I'm gonna take a Cold Case Cracker. It's a detective. I do like Escape Tunnel. Even, uh, especially because we're playing a card that's double blue, double white, you really don't want to be splashing if possible if you're going to be playing the Ezrim. So I'm just going to take the on-color detective for the deck. So we have a nice one drop, three drop, four drop, and five drop here for the deck. That's a late case of the stash skeleton. Uh, not interested in that card whatsoever in this deck. So what are we looking at? Well, the best card in this pack here is Person of Interest, along with the case of the stash skeleton. So those are options. But I really want to try to stay blue-white. And if I want to try to stay blue-white, Dramatic Accusation would be the consideration here. I mean, is there some world where I go red-blue? I just, you know, I, this is definitely different than what I normally do. But I'm just going to take the Dramatic Accusation. I'm just going to take the Dramatic, like Person of Interest is the best card there. I'm just going to take the Accusation. We're going to draft the blue-white deck here, folks. You see this? Those are blinders. I'm putting them on. All right, let's take a two drop in the Sanitation Automaton. Sanguine Savior is just okay, but we only have a Novice Inspector as a two mana card for now. White, definitely something that we're fighting over at the moment, but I do not care. I don't care this draft. Let's go for it. Let's see what happens if we force blue white 
because we have Ezra. Will it work out? We'll see. We'll see. Here, there's an on the job, which is generally not great, but I'll take it here. I don't really like absolving Lamasu that much. We already have a five mana card. If we somehow end up with a deck with several inside sources and maybe a dog walker, on the job can be a reasonable combat trick to play in this deck. Don't really like the Grif Knot Tracker. We already have kind of two four drops here because you can play the Granite Witness face up turn four. So it's between the Hotshot Investigators and the face down card. I don't mind Hotshot Investigators, but I want to keep my curve low. So I'm going to take the three mana detective here in the Undercover Crocodile. Take another face down card here. Don't really want to play the Phantom. And I'm going to say it again. White, definitely not open. White, definitely not open. But still going to try. Still going to try. Uh, don't really need a second Phantom. I don't think Candlestick is especially playable. I'll take, a, I'll take the Eavesdropper, I guess. But, oops. Don't, not not going to play it, most likely. Would like an out cold and some more cheap cards to play in my deck, definitely. Uh, and Dramatic Accusation and On the Job are kind of questionable cards, but I'm okay with everything else that we have so far. And wow, what a pack. We've been open, opening some... some Monster packs here. Greenbelt Radical, Hard Hitting Question, Neighborhood Guardian, Lamplight Phoenix. Like all the uncommons are good and a good rare and inside source and season console. I mean, four, five, six. Like there, you, you can literally, like eight picks are just good cards that you would take somewhat early, maybe nine. We're probably going to table this bounce spell. Hoping I table season consultant, but given how not open white is, probably not going to be the case. But we're going to take Neighborhood Guardian. Unicorn Beats, very, very good. We need two drops. This is everything that I want. I would love an inside source as well, but let's take this. Really would like to get Private Eye. That would be awesome uh, to go with some of our detectives here. Uh, no More Lies is definitely good, but inside source is better in my opinion. So going to take that and hope to table the No More Lies if nobody's specifically in blue-white. Alcold, also pretty nice. But I think the inside source is better. So let's take that. This is just a premium three-mana card, right? In a world where everybody's playing 3-mana 2-2s, two you get a 3-mana 1-1 one one that makes a 2-2, two two, not to mention the potential for detective synergies, and we have Neighborhood Guardian, so on turn 3, you can attack for 4 damage, and we have an on-the-job. There's just so many reasons why Inside Source is awesome in this deck. And now we have an Exit Specialist here, third pick. Super happy. This pick is going phenomenally. We went Neighborhood Guardian into Inside Source into Exit Specialist. Very, very happy with this start so far. Going to put the Exit Specialist here at 3 because you really don't want to play this at 2. But it is an option. I do count it as a 2-mana card because, well, you can play turn 2. I know, I know. Big brain. Here I'm going to take Market Watch Phantom over Projector Inspector. I do like Projector Inspector, of course, in Detectives. Black, wide open as always. With Case of the, Sca case of the Stash Skeleton and Extract Confession. But 2 drops, 2 drops, 2 drops, 2 drops. Welcome to... Modern Drafting. If it's a two-mana card and it's somewhat decent, you take it. We already have four threes. I mean, we can even put this here. We want to keep the curve low. With the Novice Inspector and the Inside Source, the On the Job actually seems like a reasonable card here. Uh, if there's a card that we're cutting so far, it's probably the Dramatic Accusation. But this pack has been incredible. Oh my gosh, and a fifth pick Prof's Eidetic Memory. We did our best to cut off Blue White in pack one, and we are being really paid off here in pack two. Uh, Granite Witness would have been the pick had we not picked up the Prof's Eidetic Memory, but really, really happy with this card. This does make cards like Projector Inspector much better, so that's going to be something that we're going to be mindful of. Also, Prof's Eidetic Memory is a sick combo with Coveted Falcon. If they're tapped out, you can like kind of one-shot them out of nowhere, but let's take the Prof's Eidetic Memory here. And uh, wow, that's a late Detective Satchel 6 pick, but I'm going to take Detect uh, Reasonable Doubt. It's a two-mana card, and... Uh, you know, might play to my deck. Honestly, better than Dramatic Accusation, probably. That's a late get a leg up. People still un uh, underrate this card. This card's phenomenal in just about any green deck. We're going to take Cold Case Cracker here, though. Another detective to go into our deck. Oh, that is a fuss bother eighth pick. Oh, my goodness. This card is incredible. It's a go wide spell. If we have a nice aggressive start, this is great. And then, of course, in the late game, you can make the three Thopters. This is the perfect Fuss Bother deck. So really happy about that. And as predicted, we did table the unauthorized exit. I think I'm going to take it here over the Fairy Snoop. And now the alcohol table. Okay, we are really, we are truly doing it here. Might even cut the on the job now. 
given that we have an out cold and a fuss already. So, and probably can cut the reasonable doubt here just because we are looking very, very good on playables at this point. I do like Unauthorized Exit, and I believe it's one of the actual best cards in blue-white. Let me see. Unauthorized Exit has, like, an absurd win rate in most blue decks. Looks like it's, it's just at 58%. But, it, I mean, this feels like quite a good Unauthorized Exit deck. All right, what do we want to take here? Mentor of the Meek or Seasoned Consultant? Sadly, Mentor of the Meek does not have the highest win rate. I'm just going to take Seasoned Consultant. I think without Cold Fuss Bother, I just want more twos. Now I want to curve out and beat people down. Sorry, uh, uh, Monastery, I mean Monastery Mentor. If it was Monastery Mentor, I would have taken it. But Mentor of the Week is just a little bit slow for this format. Here, not interested in dramatic accusation. Another killer among us is in the pack. But I think, I'll, I guess I'll just take Haas the Vigilante. Just another top end card to potentially play in my deck. Wow, green, super open, buried in the garden, another Analyze the Pollen, Topiary Panther. We already have an out cold and a Fuss Bother. We have an On the Job here as well as potential options. So I think we have enough kind of um, over-the-top type spells that I don't need a second copy of out cold. So I'm going to happily take another Granite Witness for our deck. We'll, t we'll put the Vigilante in the maybe pile. This is a good Crime Stopper sprite deck. We are looking to be very, very uh, proactive with this strategy. And this is, I think, our first collect evidence card as well. So it's nice to have at least one. Like I said, Projector Inspector would be super, super nice here to go with the Prof's Eidetic Memory. W do want to take advantage of this if you can. And what do we take out of this pack? Don't really care for Hotshot Investigators. Cease and Desist is not something I want. I'll just take another Sanitation Automaton in case we feel like we need more twos. Now there's a Season Consultant or a Bubble Smuggler. I don't really like Eliminate the Impossible, and this does not feel like a good Forensic Researcher deck. I'll take the Season Consultant. I think it's a little better than the Bubble Smuggler. Take Hotshot Investigators. And, and unsurprisingly, uh, this pack is considerably worse than the others. We'll take the Bubble Smuggler now. Not a really a good Jaded Analyst deck, as we're not really drawing a bunch of cards. But yeah, I mean, this all makes sense. Pack 2 was great. Pack one was medium, pack three was great, but I think this deck will still end up playing out pretty fine just because we have a good curve and we do have a bomb and we do have finishers. So still pretty happy with this deck overall and plenty of cards to uh, cut from this deck. Meddling Youths versus, well, I'm not playing that one. We'll note that the value of car like investigate cards also goes up with Prof's Eidetic Memory. So that's also something that I should keep in mind. A little unfortunate that I didn't get a single projector inspector. I got to see like one, I think, but didn't get too many opportunities at them. All right. Uh, maybe Haas the Vigilante and the Investigators. I think I want to build this deck as aggressively as possible. Let's cut the Dramatic Accusation and the Reasonable Doubt. And this gives us... Three good spells for three spells that we're really happy. Uh, excuse me, six spells that we're happy with. Let's cut maybe those, maybe those. This goes here for the most part. This still gives us five twos and then potentially six and a novice inspector, which is pretty good. And then now we can dig in and try to find some extra filler cards for the deck. So taking a look at the spells, there's reasonable doubt and dramatic accusation. Dramatic accusation could be okay. I don't think the card is good in general, but just as a way to uh, tap something down to get in for the final few points of damage. And we do, we are lacking some removal. So yeah, let's go ahead and play that. And then probably just one more creature. It could just be a Haas the Vigilante, honestly. Let's take a look again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spells, and then just all creatures. We have like two bounce spells, a thing to tap something down, another bounce spell here, another thing to tap something down, out cold on the job. Yeah, definitely want one more creature. So is it Haza Vigilante or Hotshot Investigators? Probably just a Vigilante, right? Just a nice, another five drop. I think it's okay given that we have a pretty good curve. Or we can just play a Sanitation Automaton just to give us another cheap play. Hmm... You know what? You know what? Let's just take the let's just play the automaton. 
let's try to dra- let's just try to make this as aggressively as as aggressive as possible. This gives us seven twos and a novice inspector. And by playing more cheap things, cards like Fuss Bother and um, cards like Fuss Bother uh, and On the Job just get better in general. Where whereas I mean Haza Vigilante, I already have a five mana card, so I don't think I need to play it. But I think it's close. Okay, blue white detectives. We have lots of twos. I mean, this hand is okay. It's got three lands. Would like a two mana card. It would just be such justice if we drew our sanitation automaton here, right? Just turn two. It's like, hey, good job. But blue white tempo is more or less what we drafted here. Planes off the top. So if we find nothing, inside source turn three is going to be the play. They didn't have anything turn two. All right, we did draw a two drop. Let's hope they don't have a counter spell. Good, they didn't. They might have a deduce or an unauthorized exit here. Or nothing. Are they in a full control? They, it looked like they had something to do there. Okay. Let's attack. They didn't block. I am more than happy with that, of course. An inside source here for us. Let's see what they do. Dramatic accusation on seasoned consultant. I will allow it. That is completely fine. Oh, that is great. All right, let's attack with our 2 2. See what they do. And we'll play Novice Inspector and Face Down Granite Witness. The beats, the beats are a coming. I can even um, bounce my season consultant. I can bounce my season consultant here if I want. Oh. I don't know that I want to play that right now, but man, that was good. Especially with two open mana. Hmm. Let me think here. Let's uh All right, let's face this up. Tap down the Furtive Courier and see what they do. And then we can attack with Granite Witness and our 2-2. They could have Auspicious Arrival here, which would be kind of annoying. All right, they did. And we can't bounce it, unfortunately. All right. Yeah, they got us. I am going to pass. I don't think this is worth using Dramatic Accusation on. I want to be able to crack a clue because I want to be able to draw a land here to play um, Ezrim. Wow, that's interesting though. Now I'm really tempted. I sh I'm tempted to bounce the Furtive Courier here. Now they can flip over something that makes a token that would be pretty bad. Um, but it's still a decent tempo play. I mean, alternatively, I can save my Granite Witness, but... I'm going to go with Bouncing the Furtive Courier and take my chances. Okay, they cracked a clue. Let's sure hope that's not a gadget technician. Oh, we'll keep that. All right. That was very good for us. No idea what this is. Two blue. Okay, what do we want to do? I want to cast Prof's Eidetic Memory. And our opponent scooped. All right. Yeah, I think the um, the bounce spell was just a little too devastating. Um, wanted to cast the Ezrim, but didn't get the chance. That's definitely one of those uh, still had all these moments where it's like, oh, you can see it, but wait, my, my rare. I couldn't cast it yet. 
I'm sure over the course of this, we will cast it at some point. Still ranked number three. I don't know who's number two, but we got to keep rattling off some wins here. Double unauthorized exit in the opener is not great. I wonder if I should just be playing one. I just, I kind of hate drawing two copies of this card, but I do like the card. Uh, I'm doing this simply as a way to search for lands and slow them down just a little bit. I just wanted to make sure that I don't miss land drop number three. I just think it's that important there. Like if that was a spell on top, I want to be like the moment I hit three, then then I don't have to throw away cards like the unauthorized exit there. But because I can just start running out my face down cards. But I just thought it was that important to make sure that I hit my three, that I wanted to tap uh, bounce the reckless detective and move forward. Ooh. And they really needed the rummage there too. Okay, inside source here from us. Let's see if they attack. If they attack, I probably don't block. But it, this is a scary board for them. I mean, maybe I do block? I don't know. I mean, they could have the chases on, I guess. The thing is, if they like shock, is it really that bad for us? They just don't play another th thing this turn. Sure, yeah, that's okay. I mean, like I said, the, the thing is, they're not really just, they're not able to add another thing to the board, so it's really not that bad for us. All right, let's uh, double creature this turn with novice inspector plus season consultant. Same situation here. I'll just block the detective. If they have a trick, they have a trick. They drew two lands. So and we missed land drop number four, sadly. No attack from them. Interesting. I'll play cold case cracker here. Operation win with flyers. But so far, only good cards that we've seen. Cornered Crook, oof, on the Cold Case Cracker. That's very good. If I draw a land, I'll probably face down and tap the Crook here to buy some time. I think this is a not great attack for them. Yeah, I don't know that you want to trade a 1-3 for a 3-2. But I guess they were just afraid that this might be a 3-3. Vengeful Tracker. Oof. Okay. We'll be taking some damage when we crack our clues. Let's go to combat. And then let's tap down the cornered crook. And I'm not blocking the Reckless Detective. I'm just going to keep smacking them for, two, for three here with the witness. So we're going to take the two damage here. And they also drew Galvanize. Okay, this is going to be tough. I mean, they just have a very good blue-red deck. They had all the right removal spells. So uh, we are definitely in some trouble here. Let's play a face-down card and see how they attack. Wow, Vengeful Tracker getting in too. We'll keep the exit specialist. Kylox's Volt Strider? Oh no. That is horrible. They can bounce my face down card? This one's going to be a tough one. They've got a sweet blue-red deck brew in here. Novice Inspector I might use here to chump lock.
Although to be fair, if they collect evidence six, I can bounce it, right? So they're gonna like, I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna exile. Okay, so they have unauthorized exit here as an option. All right, we're in combat. And then let's turn this face up. Boom. Novice inspector, you did some decent work here for us. So can they crew six, five? Yeah, they can still bounce, ugh. Oh man, um, you may cast an instant source of from one card's exile with it. What do I do? This is a disaster. This thing is so good. They just like exile a fender at large and felonious rage and cast the bounce spell on my face down card and hit me for gazillions. I guess I need to try to find out cold. All right, we're just playing everything. I don't think that does it here. Yep. This is our situation right now. So they're gonna, like I said, they're probably bouncing. If they, I mean, they can bounce any number of things here, right? Does it get exiled or does it? Okay, the spell gets put into the bottom. Okay. Oh, they're they're casting felonious rage. Okay, but they have to choose. Oh no 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 no! It's a card exiled with it. Sure. All right. This is so rough. <laughs> um, all right. Have nothing? Reckless Detective is so good. It drew them out of this. All right. Yep. GG's. I don't know that our deck is powerful enough to deal with all the nonsense that they had unless we drew our own bomb in the Ezrim, but there you go. There is the power of the Volt Strider. I may have been underrating that card because that card did some serious work in that game. Definitely. All right. One and one here with our Blue White Detectives deck. All right. We drew our rare. This is the kind of the reason why we forced Blue White, even though, like I said before, Blue White wasn't necessarily open. I'll have to go back and re-look re at the log to see what actually was open, but this is so good. The The argument, the, the, the what we're testing here is, is this card so good that you take it and you, you pseudo-force it, right? If there's just a playable that's blue or white, every pack, do you take it or do you just still try to draft a well-balanced deck? That's the question here. You know, the Prophet's Eidetic Memory in this deck is just okay. It just puts a counter on something. I'll just do this when, when I can afford to, but I don't have to, I don't have to cast it early. I, if I don't have Projector Inspector or anything crazy like that. All right, face down card from the opponent. And, ooh, that's interesting. All right, well, it's a two drop though. That would have been better later, but I can still play uh, Market Watch Phantom now. Next turn, I have the choice of either Prophetic, uh, Prop's Eidetic Memory plus Neighborhood Guardian or just playing the Cold Case Cracker here. Both very good options. The Eidetic Memory makes it so that it's more likely for us to find land number five for the Ezrim if we want. That is a Massacre Girl. Uh-oh. 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 Interesting. 
Um, creatures you control have wither. All right. Let's uh, try to get in for a lot of damage then, shall we? Hmm. I think Flyers is kind of the answer here. So I can flip up the Granite Witness, tap Massacre Girl, and then just play like Neighborhood Guardian, I guess. All right, let's do that. Let's race. But I don't think getting there, getting in through the ground is something that we can do. Don't highlight your card because it makes me think you have a bite spell and then it's going to be terrible for me. Next turn we can go something like, if we don't draw land and we feel like we need to cast the Ezrim to win this game, um, we can certainly go Prof's Eidetic Memory into Season Consultant. Jump the Market Watch Phantom, and that gets us in for seven more damage here. So if they have a removal spell, sure. I just don't want it to be a bite spell specifically. Really interesting that they attack with the the face. Okay, I guess they're also trying to race us. We have to be mindful of something like out cold here. Crime Stopper Sprite, okay. Oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. Oh, I like this. I like this. So what I can do is play Season Consultant, pump my Granite Witness and attack. And then when they block, I can use Unauthorized Exit to bounce the Massacre Girl. I'm actually surprised they chose not to block the Granite Witness because of the Wither. Oh, uh, actually, I guess this is also fine. All right, let's go ahead and bounce Massacre Girl. And we'll keep the land. But this is good. Now Massacre Girl's not in play. Huge tempo play. And we still get in for a pretty sizable attack next turn. They're at seven. Don't have a way to jump the Market Watch Phantom with our hand now. Bubble Smuggler. Okay. Interesting. Night Drinker Moroi. Eliminate the impossible, that would be pretty... Let's just attack with the flyer here. If it's a night drinker, that's like, that's fine. Oh, it's exit specialist, sure. Huh. Well, that definitely changes things. Hmm. I feel like I want to wait on this Ezrim. They're at seven. I th like playing a Granite Witness here still seems pretty good. Just tapping something down and then attacking for a lot next turn. All right, let's do that. And I'm going to save this for next turn because I can put a counter on something. I'll let them attack. Surveillance monitor. Okay. So now the question is, how do I want to attack and what do I want to tap? Because I don't think I'm tapping the Thopter. Because I, I don't have enough for a lethal attack there. Yeah, let's tap the monitor. It's just the biggest creature. Um, 
let's see here. I can, yeah, let's play Prof's Eidetic Memory. Uh, actually, let's play Sanitation Automaton first because I really want to be able to find a land. This jumps the Market Watch Phantom. Unauthorized Exit, I'm definitely still keeping. I think it's going to be phenomenal here. Let's play Prof's Eidetic Memory. Now the question is, what do I want to put a counter on? So none of these creatures can, I mean, they can block this. This will be a 3-3, so a double block would be pretty good there. I just don't see them actually being able to kill anything else. If I put a counter here, they probably put these two creatures here. Uh, let's put a counter on Market Watch Phantom. This this is three three power creatures that are attacking. And they can choose whether or not they want to double block it. So I'm glad I didn't put a counter on the um the season consultant, but now they're down to four. And I have three attackers. Sure, they can have a collect evidence card to make a Thopter, which would be pretty nice. But we're pretty well set up here. Kind of want them to just uh, cast Massacre Girl here. Gadget Technician. Okay. All righty. So now what? If I bounce this, this gets in, but it's not quite enough to kill them. I'm just going to attack with Granite Witness, and I'm just going to play Ezrim. Good luck! We got Ezrim online. And hopefully that's game. They've been kind of stuck on four lands. And they're not happy about it. They had a solid deck though. Just, uh, you know, the, the mana gods giveth, the mana gods taketh, right? It certainly happened to our fair share of games. And I guess it happened the other way this time, unfortunately for them. All right, two and one with Azorius Ezrim. Opponent on the play. We have Ezrim. We're on the draw. We have two islands, Neighborhood Guardian, double Granite Witness. If we just draw a single land, we can play both our Granite Witnesses. I'm going to keep this. I know we can't cast a Neighborhood Guardian, but I'm basically looking at this as if I draw any land, if I draw any land, then I still have plays, and I have the best card in my deck. I have two, the two of the best cards in my deck. So just the singular planes in this hand is amazing. And just a... Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, without the Ezrum, our deck is just a bunch of mediocre blue-white cards for the most part. And I feel like this is this hand has so much upside that it's kind of worth um keeping, even though it's a little bit sketchy. Like if this was just some other random four mana card, like a cold case cracker or something, I might mulligan this, but because it's Ezrum, I think I keep. All right, bit of a little racing situation here. We do have the Alcold and the Ezrim, so this hand is pretty good at racing, I will say. Even next turn, if we feel like there, uh, our opponent has a little too much, then um, we can still, uh, we can play Season Consultant as a blocker for the Exus Special and still tap something down. Especially if they play something big this turn. V2, Gazi, Inspector, okay. Huh. It is really odd that they did that and kept two mana up. Hmm. My spidey senses are tingling. I will play Season Consultant. They are letting me attack. All right. All 
Uh, I feel like I'm going to run into a combat trick here, but so be it. Oh, wow, nothing. I just wanted to take the value there and kill the V2 Gazi Inspector, but that was definitely one of those shields down moments where I go, all right, have nothing, please. <laughs> all right. Dramatic accusation on Granite Witness, sure. Season Consultant uh, easily will block either of these creatures. And... I can wait on the Ezra. The thing is, they, they also have um, Reasonable Doubt available here, too. So let's go ahead and play this face down. And what do I want to what do I want to target here? They have two mana up. Got to think about this one. You know, it's actually interesting. I think I want to target my Neighborhood Guardian, untap my Granite Witness, and attack with all three creatures, and this gives us the boost. Because this has Vigilance. <laughs> so now they need to use two mana to shuffle this in, which is fine, but they only have two mana available. So they don't have great blocks unless they have a combat trick. If they had a combat trick, they would have used the last turn too. So yeah, this is really good for us. They can shuffle this in for sure, but we have out cold now too. Yes. Granite Witness, you see just every game, there's always something different you can do with that Granite Witness. Not going to mess around here. Let's just attack. Like they can have something, sure. But that does nothing. And we got them. Nope, we didn't get them. Damn. They gave me the good game, though. They gave me the good game. They didn't see the um, dramatic accusation line. It's fine. I mean, oh, okay. Well, we still have the flyer. Flyers for the win. Okay, still number three. Man, whoever's number two, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself in the video. But I don't know if I can even trust you, right? So reveal yourself and like, send me a screenshot. Uh, we all know Eakin's number one. Okay, we are three and one, and this hand on the draw, inside source, granite witness, and a bunch of blue cards. Now we need to draw. Our opening hands have always just tested us. We've gotten there before. We have inside source and granite witness as a play if we draw a singular land. These cards are all pretty good. I don't have a two. I'll mulligan. What, 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 is with, what is with our openers? I don't understand. I mean, I, I don't want to go to five. But. I, it's like two blue cards, all white cards in hand. Or two, two islands. Or two planes. What am I supposed to do with this? How, how, how can I work with this hand? Like, at least with this hand, give me the prophesidetic memory. All right. That was our 23rd card. Find us a land, please. It's an island. I will, I will begrudgingly keep.
They probably have a removal spell here, but I'm just going to... I mean, they might not. Oh, they don't. And I just wanted to have a flyer in play. Person of interest. All right. Well, you know what I said about the... Um, how the mana gods giveth and the mana gods taketh away. They are taketh thing awaying. Taketh thing. They're taking it away from me. All right, that's what's happening. Okay, so they're land cycling here. They're getting an island. I wonder if this means they're going to play like a V2 Ghazi inspector here. Happily trade the ground creatures. We, ha we have a plan here and it's to attack in the skies. Oh, man. This feels like an out cold turn. We have out cold. We can crack a clue, try to find a white source. We can flip up Granite Witness and uh, get in in the skies. It's our hope. They have lots of cards in hand. They got their island. They got their splash card. So likely not going to be... Oh, and they have infinite... Well, you know, the nice thing is they didn't add to their board. But, I mean, their follow-up play here is going to be great, legitimately. Let's crack this clue. Come on, deck. Just going to give me all white cards? Okay, there it is. There, there's a white source. <sighs> okay. It's actually kind of interesting what I do here. I can play Neighborhood Guardian, which sets me up for a big attack next turn. They're probably going to chump with the Rubble Belt Maverick, though. So I kind of want to just attack for five in the air and play a Novice Inspector. I think I'll do that. I, sh I could have just flipped this up, whatever. Uh... You know what's actually interesting with this? Actually, no, there's nothing interesting about this. Uh, th this was just a dopey play. I could have tapped down Rab World Maverick to play around, get a leg up. All right, that was a mistake. It's okay. Mistakes happen. To the skies. To the skies. Air Force One. Air Force One. Do we block? No, we take this one. It's free for them, but I mean, we take this. Face down card. All right, they got a lot of action here. I'm gonna crack this. Ooh, never mind. I'm gonna just play another flyer here instead. Now we have two lethal flyers. We can block with Novice Inspector and hope that it's good enough. Hustle, hustle, bustle, I guess. Oh my gosh. Why did I have to open this mouth of mine? How much damage is this? 11, 15, 22, 26, 29 damage of trample. 3, 7, 14, 18, 29. 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, you got me. All right, oh, good beats. And they flipped over Crowd Control Warden. That's so sick. That is sick. I mean, we had a little bit of an awkward hand, and our opponent kind of comboed us out. I mean, when you take 29 trample damage in one turn, it is what it is. Ooh, rank number 10 player here at 3 and 2. So in, so hopefully let's draw our good cards here. Uh, this, I mean, at least we have turn 1 Novice Inspector. So we're on the play, at least with a pretty good curve. Swamp, Fester Leech, Gorehound, okay. I'll play the Sanitation Automaton. I'll keep the land for now. I think it's too important to at least hit lands like Land number four. Hmm. 
And let's go ahead and tap the Gorehound. All right, I mean, this is a really nice curve for us. They're probably playing a face down card here. Swamp in the yard. I actually don't mind trading, trading Sanitation Automaton for the Gorehound. I think this card will give them lots and lots of value. I'll play the Season Consultant here and can crack my clue. If they try to kill my creature, I mean, I don't have any other resources. I can just bounce it and save it with Unauthorized Exit. Get a Surveil. Like a removal spell on my Crime Stopper Sprite or something. Uh, extract the Confession wouldn't work. The thing is, they're kind of interested. Ooh, Slimy Dual Leech. Okay. All right, let's uh, crack a clue. Find something nice. That'll do. That'll do. Hmm. Thing is, I don't have a great play outside of playing the Ezrim. And I'm wondering if just the clues alone is good enough to just jam the Ezrim without having to save it. I'm leaning towards yes. Because otherwise, what do I have? It's like dramatic accusation, the dual leech, or bounce something. So yeah, let's do it. That's the thing. Even if my opponent kills Ezrim, right? Even if they kill the Ezrim, I have two clues. If they had a removal spell, they might have been interested in killing my Crime Stopper sprite. I did have two mana up, though. They don't have the mana to extract the Confession to kill my Ezrim right now. So, it's like, pressure is on. I have Ezrim. Do you have the answer? I'm at 20 life. They do have the answer. Under City Eliminator, sure. They did have the answer. But, I mean, they, they, they did lose a creature to do that. So, there is that. Let's see. I think it's just Crocodile and attack with the flyer. Like they traded a Basilica Stalker. We still have the two clues. We're going to be up resources here. There are 10 life. We have a lot to work with. That is kind of annoying. Um... It's not too bad. I mean, I'll crack this clue. Huh. Um. I'm just debating whether or not I want the unauthorized exit or accusation. I think I want the unauthorized exit, to be honest. I, th I'm gonna v I value the instant speed nature of it. Tech. Let's just play another flyer. They're being very patient with the removal if they have one. Holy cow. I'll let that die. I can crack my clue. I still have a flyer. Let's see what their last card is. Runebrand Juggler. Okay. 
targeting unscrupulous agent, right? I see. No, it's not bad. They get to sneak in for some damage and then they can crack this to um, kill my Crime Stopper Sprite. So our opponent getting pretty good value here. I'm wondering if it's actually worth it to just trade Novice Inspector and Season Consultant for the Agent and keep my Flyer. Yeah, sure. That's what I thought. <laughs> All right, so now what do we want to do? I want to bounce Crime Stopper Sprite and then freeze something, I think. Put that in the yard. All right. Um, four, five, six. Let's freeze. The 3-3, three, three. then let's play a face down card and then pass. Lots of good options here. What did you top deck? Wow, Runebrand Juggler, okay. You know, they might just attack. I'm, I mean, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Are they gonna do it again? <laughs> Like, I guess there's no reason for them not to. All right. So that creature cannot block. I do want them to kill Crime Stopper Sprite. Um, I suppose, actually, I can just tap this slimy dual leech. And then I can actually just get in a really nice attack. And then are we happy trading Room Brand Juggler here for one of my one of the face down cards? Um, they're gonna have to crack this to kill something. And then we get to tap the slimy dual each. Yeah, I think that's okay. They can eat this if they want, but they'll take lots of damage. Okay. Yeah, this is like a ton of pressure. They're probably killing my flyer. They can also kill Season Consultant, but I just don't know how they deal with the flyer. But when you play against a rank 10 player, every little edge, it's just high level magic being played here. All right, they're minimizing the damage that they take, but they're at three, we're at 20. We have two lethal flyers. Well, we have two flyers, two clues. All right, you know, I'm still happy that we played out the Ezrim. I think the clues and drawing the cards helped us just continue pushing the, the advantage. They had a pretty good black red deck, but um, we were the ones that were constantly applying pressure. And so eventually they just kind of crumbled, especially when we drew those face down cards. At any given point when they're on the back foot, I can start flipping over my Crocodiles and my Bubble Smugglers. All right, on the play here, we have four wins. So number one, like getting five is always ideal. I feel like with five, you move up in rank slightly. Rubble Belt Maverick, Sanitation Automaton's uh, natural enemy. This and uh, Novice Inspector as well. Uh, if it's a land, I'm going to bottom it or graveyard it. If it's, hmm. Yeah, I'll keep it, sure. It's 
tap that thing down. I mean, it's a turn. I didn't have. I didn't even have a face down card to play, right? So, let's play cold case cracker here. Now we're in a really great spot. Land good, spell good. All right, so they had lightning helix there. Just green, red, white. No big deal. Griff not tracker. Okay. If I draw a land, I think I'm just jamming Azrum again. Okay, we didn't. I'm going to crack my clue here. Because I want to find lands if possible. That's good. Let's play the... Neighborhood Guardian, and pass. Looks like they're gonna kill my Neighborhood Guardian. Oh, they're Splashing Shock. I don't really like Splashing Shock in general. They have two cards in hand. Is this the type of situation where we can afford to wait on the Ezrum? I believe so, given that they didn't play something this turn. Green, 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 white. Yep, because we have Bubble Smuggler as a play this turn, I'm just going to play that face down. We're at 17, so I'm going to let this play out this way. I'm wondering whether or not I should be, uh, yeah, I'll shuffle the Tunnel Tipster back in. The thing is, I kind of want them to draw Tunnel Tipster, honestly. So. Topiary Panther, okay. All right, well, definitely have to play the Ezrum. Would really like a land. Did not find a land. What can we do? Um, I mean, we can make some kind of crazy block with On The Job. They have one card. I mean, we're just I'm just playing it. They have one card. We're at 14. They played a 6-5 trampler. I think I just have to. They have chases on. They have chases on. That's fine. You drew two, you drew another combat trick? That's unreal. They had one card in hand. They had one card in hand. Two here. One, two, three, four, two, three damage. Okay. Well, if they draw nothing, we can still block everything and go down to like one or something. Okay. We're at two. Tin Streep Gossip. Jeez. The hits do not stop for the opponent. All right. We're at two life. Nothing, please. You just, you need to calm down. You need to calm down for just like one second. Friend. Get a leg up into Tin Street Gossip, into Buried in the Garden. Yep. Oh man, this is rough. What do I even do? Like, I had the block set up. I could have double blocked Tin Street Gossip and the Tracker and cast on the job. They just, like, even a creature would have been reasonable. Okay, block, block. No, wait. Block. Bounce. Graveyard. Uh, should I have bounced this? I don't know. 
because flyers. I have a lot of clues to draw. Yeah, maybe I should have done it the other way. Ay ay ay. Okay, that's a bounce spell. Okay. That is a thing. We are trying our best. Trying our best to come back in this one. Oh man. We can tap down the Griffnot Tracker. Get in for three in the air. Tin Street Gossip. No, just nothing. No, come on. Just one turn. Just one turn, please. Oh, look, they're, they're just, they were reading that card. They were a thousand percent reading that card. Okay. Hey, we actually got to eat a nervous gardener. And then we have to bounce the Tin Street gossip. Okay. Staying alive, staying alive. That's, do I want that? It's a pretty bad creature. I don't think that I do. I have some clues to draw. Okay, that's it, that's it. Don't play anything out, don't play it, just draw land. We're trying with these clues. Oh. Oh, I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. I mean, okay, sure. Come on, deck. I think this is just too much beef. Our deck's not really that great at handling all this beef. Dog walker? That was a dog walker too? At least... Oh. <laughs> Sure. Sure. I'm actually kind of enjoying this. Yeah, why not? Why not? We're at two life. We can tap this. This costs five mana. We can crack a clue. Okay. Our deck is trying, but... Like, we've drawn a lot of cards. Look at this. I mean, at some point, they're going to draw lands, right? Like, at some point. The thing is, the, the only problem here is I just don't ever see myself being able to reasonably attack anytime soon. Right? Right? I have to block the Sanguine Savior. It's gonna, this is 100% a face down creature. Oh my gosh, they missed. It's possible. I didn't know that it's possible. But we have a lot of lands in our deck too. Okay, so how are we blocking if they attack? Like, am I just, do I just have to double block this thing? 
I can triple block it, actually. If they attack with everything... If they attack with everything... Then... This can block Dog Walker. Novice Spectre here, and then we eat. Yeah, let's... We need to start attacking. Let's attack. All right, we can't attack anymore. But we got the Tin Street Gossip off the battlefield. Oh my gosh, that is an incredible draw. Okay. We're at two, though. They're bound to draw something at some point. All right, that's a face down card. Okay, we might not be able to attack again. Oh, Crime Stopper Sprite. Okay, okay, okay. We're still going. We're still going. Collect evidence. 50. <laughs> 50. Uh, four, five, six. Let's tap down this face down card. Okay, if it's a dog walker, I'm not going to play around dog walker. All right. Four vigilance in the air. Let's attack. They're at 15. Okay, we don't know what this card is still. Tunnel tipster, they redrew it off the dramatic accusation. Oh my gosh. Another spell. Come on. Another spell. Ah, I got greedy. I got greedy. I got greedy. Okay. We're not dead here. I just need, I feel like I still need to make some proactive attacks. We'll see how they attack. Hopefully exit, exit specialist is what we need. I can also bounce my other, my, own, my other thing. Like I can bounce one of my other creatures to save it or get a reset here. Uh oh. Buried in the garden. Okay. That's unfortunate. Okay, um, so now they, they have a lethal attack. They have three men available. I think I just have to kill the token here. All right, this is not a lethal attack. Oh, man. Okay. Dog Walker. Uh, let's block with uh, Season Consultant. Sure. <laughs> okay. We really need something now. They definitely don't have anything else. They would have played everything. No. 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 This. Okay. I don't know what this face down card is. The thing is, something is going to get eaten here by this, whatever, whatever this face down card is, it's going to get eaten. Do I give my Crime Stopper Sprite Vigilance? Block with the Market Watch Phantom? Let's do it. Because we blocked the face down card and we can still block one of these tokens. Another face down card. Ugh. Okay, it's just a nervous gardener. All right. I mean, but the tunnel tipster is now a 2 2. 
Oh god. Okay, this is nothing. That's a land in their hand too. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on, something! No! That we oh man. Five oh, 13. Okay, I guess no, honestly, everything left in our deck is a land. Actually. 13. Four, no, we have like one spell left in our deck. Never mind. We had to go through almost our entire deck. And we didn't quite get there. How did they... How did we draw all those cards? How do we draw all those cards and... Um, not able... Were we not able to win? You know what I mean? That's crazy. Okay, well... It is what it is. Okay, well, GG's opponent, GG's opponent. That was in, that was insane. Um, but sadly, not quite good enough. Those four fours were were kind of big, and um, they just rattled off too many spells in a row. I mean, our deck tried. Our deck tried, right? From with our back against the wall, and we were doing every little thing we can to claw back into that. But we didn't have anything big outside of that Ezrim that they. Um, that they were able to dispatch. And then the big turn was the turn where they had both Fanatical Strength plus Top Deck to get a leg up to um, mess up my my block uh, with the Ezrim. I guess technically I didn't need to block with the Ezrim, but the get a leg up would have probably gotten my Ezrim anyways. But the way that I thought about it there was it's just going to, like, if I block, I was already kind of on the book back foot. I thought I had to. Maybe I just didn't need to block. But... Um, Ultimately, that game went on a bit longer and um, it just kind of came down to late game stuff. And our deck's not really the best late game deck. We need to kind of win early. And if we don't, it's really hard to come back from behind unless we try to get there with our flyers. But we were just a little bit short. But this is what happens when you force. This is what happens when you force. We did go 4-3. I thought this deck could have been capable of more potentially if we just played right. Thought this deck still just decent curve with Ezra at the top of the curve. Uh, can definitely go a long way to, to win a little, lot of matchups and can never be too upset getting four wins. That's still winning more than half your matches when you're playing against a bunch of high mythic players. You know, it's an okay result. It's an okay result. But like I said, put my blinders on for this one just to see what happened. And the result was a four and three. I just feel like I haven't trophied that much with Ezrim, despite how good, good this card is. You know, when I get a Doppelgang or a Cryptic Coat, like, trophies come a lot easier to me, I feel, than Ezrim. I'm probably just not playing this card right. I don't know. Also, I'm forcing Blue-White, whereas the other decks, I just kind of let the rares come to me. But it is what it is. I wanted to make Ezrim happen, and we went 4-3. and three. We're still rank 3. The climb continues. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the patrons. Really do appreciate your support. The link is in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow.